Hi, and welcome to our Tuesday TNT. Big thanks to our sponsor, Five Star Marine at, uh, there it is, fivestarmarinephuket.com. A great way to get out on the uh, the Pangar Bay. Inspect any number of those, what, 30 or so islands and uh, well worth a call to Sean and the team. A check out when you can get out with them anytime you're heading to the island of Phuket. On with today's program. We start in Hua Hin today. And two women are found shot dead at a property in Hua Hin. And the deceased, identified as a 63-year-old businesswoman and her 46-year-old secretary, were discovered on Sunday. Uh, Travelling from Bangkok to Hua Hin, uh, the son of the older woman arrived at his mother's home to find it securely locked, with the air conditioning still running. Upon entering the house through a back window, he was met with a foul smell, prompting him to alert the authorities. And Mrs. Pat, that's the older woman, was found with a gunshot wound to the chest, while Mrs. Sue suffered a fatal headshot. Their bodies were found at a three-storey row house along the Irrigation Canal Road. A Glock 19 9mm handgun with bullets uh, still in the chamber was found at the scene. Other items found at the scene included two urns containing ashes, a will and a suicide note, believed to be from Mrs. Sue. So this story with a lot of twists and turns. And the suicide note suggests the incident was an accidental discharge of the firearm leading to Mrs. Putt's death and a panicked response from Mrs. Sue. A lot to unpack there, a lot of questions still to be answered, uh, but that happening in Hua Hin, reported in huahintoday.com. Now, some responses from uh, yesterday's story about Patia. Uh, just randomly and truly randomly, I just grabbed these ones. And John Atkinson says, Stickman is just nostalgic for his own era. Stickman Bangkok was the author of the original article that uh, got the attention of a few publications to reprint part of his article as he reflected on the old Patia of a slightly more raunchy, I think that should be, and openly seedy era that's changing in Patia. Those days were certainly cheaper than now with better exchange rates, but Patia hasn't changed that much for what it's famous for. Frank Maida said, I visited Patia also in the late 1990s and 2000s, but somehow it seemed to me already overcrowded and, yes, boring. For me, the heydays were mid to late 80s there. It really was another adventure every other day or night. And this discussion from Aussie Kiwi, the Kiwi guy, the stick guy, back in action. He's correct about Patia is changing. The real change is coming with the proposed high-speed rail from Bangkok. Workers from Bangkok will start moving to Patia with their families. They'll be able to travel to work and back home just as fast as driving from their Bangkok homes to work. Agree or not, 35 years ago, I never believed Thailand would undergo such a change and the change in the future will be beyond belief. Now, there was a response to that particular comment from Aussie Kiwi. That was beyond belief. I'm certainly not going to read it. Uh, This one from Glenn, who said, Places change. All of the Southeast Asian cities that were once the fun centres back in the 80s and 90s, Pattaya, Bangkok, Singapore, Hong Kong, are all much milder than they once were. But Stickman is wrong. There's still plenty of fun to be had, just not at the same price as before, like all of Thailand. And people responding there to the article that we uh, read out yesterday, or parts of it, from patiamail.com, sort of speculating that uh, the Patia of 2024 had lost its mojo. And of course, as usual, we do appreciate your comments. Now, with the spotlight in Phuket, uh, and certainly on some of those alleged private beaches, Some things are changing on that front as well. We go to thephuketnews.com and Lem Na reclaimed as a public beach. And the Phuket governor visited the Lem Na beach at the northern end of Kosare yesterday to inspect plans to reclaim the beach for public use. That, of course, was Sunday when the Phuket governor arrived back on the island. After a brief stint overseas, he was directed to come back by the interior minister, Anatan Shavirakun, who said, you've got more important things to do back home. 
And local villagers gathered at the site last Thursday to protest access to the beach being closed off by a private landowner. The protest gained immediate attention by officials who moved to unravel claims to the land on which a public road was built to provide access to the beach. And after reopening up the beach, the governor said we also asked people not to set up sunbeds and umbrellas or set up any sales outlets at all at the beach. We want it to be a natural beach for the people of Phuket and so tourists can really experience nature. Well, as you'll see in just a moment, as far as Phuket's beaches are concerned, it's probably not the prettiest beach on the island. He said, and thank you to the owner of the area who's opened a path to be able to travel to the beach after he was told to do so, which helps to promote tourism to the area. Many tourists came to the beach before COVID-19. And while the governor was at the beach, this was on Sunday, local residents came to enjoy the first day of the beach being reclaimed. And Governor Sopon also enjoyed a quick clean-up of picking up trash that had washed ashore. A.K.A. a photo opportunity. Here's a picture of the beach. Well... Mm, I use the term beach loosely, there's not really that much beach and whilst the waters on that side of uh, Phuket are very swimmable it's not as if, uh, well, it's the prettiest beach to sit on. This is where it is and he was talking about it being on Koh Saray which is only just an island off the east side of uh, Phuket town. Uh, Arrow there pointing to where the beach is and as you can see that uh, canal running through uh, the Rasada area cutting the island off but it is linked by a sort of a 100 metre long bridge and as you can see there there's not really that much beach Uh, and there are better beaches I must say on Kosare but that one Lamna has attracted all the attention. Now, I think we'll see other alleged private beaches in Phuket reopened due to demands. And we now talk Songkran and the travel costs of Songkran and the, well, the very high airfares at the moment. We go to thaipbsworld.com and uh, additional flights by six airlines available during Songkran Festival. The story says that Thailand's six domestic airlines have sought permission from the Civil Aviation Authority to add 104 flights to their schedules during the Grand Songkran Festival to cope with an expected increase in air travel during the period and to resolve the problem of expensive air tickets. There's no doubt it will add more flights, but uh, whether it will resolve the expensive air tickets is another problem. And the additional flights will operate on April 11 and 12, Songkran Day being on April the 13th and April 15th and 16th, and will increase the number of available seats by, well, nearly 18,000 to Phuket, Chiang Mai, Samui, Ubon, Ratchatani and Khon Kaen. And because these extra flights will operate outside normal hours, either late at night or early morning, the airlines will offer air tickets of up to 20% below normal prices. Will they? Well, we'll see. If you've got a complaint, by the way, there's a website with the Civil Aviation Authority slash complaint if you do want to complain about the high ticket prices. So I thought I'll go to my go-to domestic airline, uh, and that's Vietjet, uh, Thai Vietjet, and we're going to be travelling in this particular uh, example from Sawanapum to Phuket on the 12th of uh, April. That's the day before Songkran Day. So let's check out the uh, the prices. Starts about seven thousand. This is the cheap seats. Goes up to about nine thousand for the uh, the full fares. Uh, we've got a seat at well, there we go, two thousand nine hundred at one thirty in the afternoon. That's the cheaper seat for the whole day with Viet Jet. And uh, yeah, then it goes back to the seven thousand three and a half thousand baht. So yeah, you can get a flight uh, on Viet Jet, Thai Viet Jet, probably same same on the other airlines, but. The cheapest airfare one way is going to be about two thousand, two and a half thousand, three thousand baht. Well, speaking of holidays, well, in fact, holy days. Let's go to Thai PBS World. Holy month of Ramadan begins in Thailand on March the twelfth, which is today. And the Muslim community in Thailand is preparing for the Islamic holy month of Ramadan. It starts today, according to an announcement from the Muslim spiritual leader of Thailand. 
The start of Ramadan, the ninth month in the Islamic lunar calendar, can vary from country to country due to the moon sightings and astronomical calculations used to determine the beginning of the month. Some countries and communities, however, now use astronomical calculations to predict the moon's visibility and therefore the start of Ramadan, using scientific observations to decide when a religious festival starts. Now, I have no idea how I'm going to approach this next story except just to read it. And it comes from the PhuketExpress.com. American man allegedly sexually assaults pregnant horse in Phuket. Not only an American man, but an 18-year-old American man allegedly sexually assaulted a pregnant horse in Talang. And police were notified uh, by a 50-year-old stable keeper in Paklok. He told police that at 4pm that day he gave a routine health check of a 10-year-old female pregnant horse inside the stable in Soibangse. And the condition of the horse alarmed the stable keeper who immediately recognised that the horse had suffered apparent sexual abuse based on her condition and stress levels. He checked CCTV footage in the stable and discovered, to his shock, a foreign man found in the stables. And the man is seen uh, appearing to sexually abuse the horse with his hand. And the footage of the incident was posted online to various animal watchdog groups where it immediately went viral. And a good decision by the Phuket Express not sharing that footage. The suspect was later identified by police only as Mr. Stephen, 18, an American national. He's been contacted to surrender himself and speak with Phuket police over the shocking incident. It was not immediately apparent if Stephen was an expat or a tourist. I think he's very soon going to be an ex-Stephen, but... uh We move on from that story to nationthailand.com and the Election Commission sets up coordination centres for senatorial election as incumbent tenures near end. So the NCPO, the coup, hand-picked senators. Their term comes to an end very soon and there will be elections, uh, national senatorial elections. And the incumbent Senate, appointed by the military junta after the 2014 coup, Well, those senators were only appointed in 2017 after the new constitution was enacted. But uh, they're scheduled to complete their term on May the 11th and 200 new senators must be elected via peer voting among candidates in 20 groups of occupations at three levels of voting, district, provincial and national levels. So that's the idea to find senators from right around Thailand and uh, 20 different occupations to try and find a a, a varied group of senators and that will happen uh, well on or after May the 11th this year. Just keeping you up to date with that one as we move to this story from thaipbsworld.com and Thailand must prepare for a possible influx of Myanmar's young people. This situation's already happening in the wake of a decision back in February. Here's the latest. And that photo at the Thai embassy in Yangon and the state administration council. This is basically the Myanmar junta and their plans to draft more soldiers to fight the resistance forces poses serious challenges for Thailand's volatile and porous border. And Myanmar's People Military Service Law, which was activated on February the 13th, obligates men and women aged 18 to 45 and 18 to 35 respectively to be drafted into the military for two years of compulsory service. Individuals with specialised knowledge, such as doctors and engineers, must serve three years. And in the case of a national emergency, that time could be extended to five years. The story goes on saying the new draft shows the military regime is desperate to add more fighters as they have suffered great losses over the past five months of intense fighting between the Tatmadaw, that's the Burmese army, and the alliances of ethnic armed groups and other resistance forces. The 2,500 kilometre border is not demarcated, but there are active border trade and people-to-people exchanges in 10 provinces bordering Myanmar. 
And they're listed there as such. Given its porous nature, human traffickers are having a field day, sneaking people through the so-called natural channels daily, oblivious to the security officials. And the Interior Ministry and National Security Council must find appropriate measures to tackle this new challenge and ensure safety. And that opinion piece published by ThaiPBSWorld.com, already seeing a discernible increase in uh, Burmese people looking for work and floating around uh, Thai Mung. Now, where we are, we're only about three hours' drive from the Burmese border, and of course, a lot of Thailand with uh, direct land crossings into uh, to Myanmar. We go to this story from Banar News at bananews.org. Uyghur migrants see no release after a decade in Thai cells. And after fleeing persecution in China and entering Thailand 10 years ago, more than 40 Uyghurs remain incarcerated in overcrowded detention centres for illegal entry without knowing their fate, and their families and rights groups said at a weekend seminar. And the groups among more than 500 Uyghurs who fled China's Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region to Southeast Asian countries back in 2014 and 15. And Thai immigration authorities arrested at least 475 Uyghurs, mostly on rubber plantations in Songkhla. Since then, more than 100 have been successfully resettled in Turkey, while others have been repatriated to China or escaped custody. I remember the photos of the ones repatriated to China, uh, heavily armed soldiers sitting next to them in a plane with hoods over their heads. And the remaining Uyghurs have been held as illegal immigrants, not refugees, under what is quoted as poor living conditions in detention centres, unable to speak with outsiders, according to an advisor of the country's National Human Rights Commission. And Thailand's foreign ministry has not responded to a request for comment on the Uyghurs by the time of publication. At least five Uyghurs have died in detention whilst in Thailand, according to the Germany-based World Uyghur Congress. And ten years on, the fate of those Uyghurs still in detention in Thailand is completely unknown to them or their families. And with that, I thank you very much for watching. Hopefully, you're a bit more up to date with things happening in Thailand. Now, we hope you can subscribe to the channel. That's the best way to support us. Otherwise, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow.